Hello, Professor Toy Box here, along with Spot, and I'm back in my Gravity Falls Toy Box, where today I'm going to set up the logic for Stan's mission to rescue Mabel from the gnomes. I know a lot of Disney Infinity fans who didn't buy the Spot figure because they didn't see the good dinosaur movie, or they didn't like the movie, or maybe the character, but I'm glad I got him. He's an interesting character, and he makes a great substitute for Mowgli from The Jungle Book, or a young Tarzan, two figures that we never got. So if you don't have this figure, I would encourage you to get him if you can find him. But I've got Spot with me because in this mission, players are going to be venturing into the wilderness to visit the Gnome Forest. So I thought a wild kid like Spot would be a fun character to use. Anyway, this mission is something of a sequel to the pilot episode Tourist Trapped where Mabel's new boyfriend, Norman, reveals himself to actually be a gnome in disguise. The gnomes chose Mabel to be their new queen, but when she rejects their proposal, they kidnap her, intending to make her queen by force. Fortunately, Dipper shows up in time, rescues Mabel, and they're able to defeat the gnomes. The backstory for this mission is that the gnomes have returned and kidnapped Mabel again, so Stan asks the player to help save her. And we'll head over here where I've got some creativity toys already set up. And let me go ahead and review those. So I've got a locator set up. This is where we're going to put Stan. And unlike Dipper, I'm going to put him in dynamically to try to save a little bit of memory because as you can see from my memory meter on the right, it's starting to get a little full. So for that, I've got a friendly wave generator, a logic gate, and a dynamic trigger. And then to use him as a mission giver, I've got a radar marker, another dynamic trigger, and a text displayer. And then that'll send the player off to the mission over here where I've got another dynamic trigger set up, a target camera, a Dunbrock enemy spawning cauldron, <laughs> excuse me, a locator, a radar marker, and a safety dome. And I also put down the uh, gnome stump from the building sets group seven drawer. I thought that would be a fun little thing to use. And actually, if I come out here, one of the things that's fun about this is you can push the button and a gnome will usually pop out <laughs> like that. The problem though is as soon as I start, <laughs> as soon as I start uh, putting in some additional things in this toy box, this will stop working because it needs some spare memory in order to be able to work. And so on my Wii U, I have to be careful about my memory usage. And that's one of the reasons why I'm not putting Stan directly into the toy box. Now, to put him in, we're going to use this friendly wave generator. And I'm going to go ahead and hook this up to that locator. So we'll do a new locator connection. And we'll put him right here, facing that direction. That's where the blue dot on the locator is facing. And if we come over and look at the friendly wave generator, to save a little time, I've already configured the wave. And we don't have a figure of Stan. The closest thing we have is the Carl Fredericks Fredrickson's costume from Up. And so that's who I chose out of the uh, list of all the different characters here. And we'll go ahead and configure the properties. And all of these we're going to leave off. I'm gonna take the generation delay to zero. We actually don't need the generation effects, so we'll take that out. Under the generated friend options, I'll set the behavior to stand still. So that's what we have for that. And then on the dynamic trigger, we'll do a new locator connection. We'll connect that up to this locator, and sorry for the camera spinning around, but. The game did part of that, I'm just trying to correct it. All right, on the properties for the dynamic trigger, target needs to be the locator. 
And for the trigger distance, I'm going to set this to be 40. Okay. And this is just for the um, logic for generating our uh, stand-in for stand. So I'm going to do the same thing here that I did for uh, my Aladdin toy box, basically. So on the dynamic trigger, we'll do a new logic connection when entered by player any. We come over to our logic gate and input. And then on output from the gate, we go to our friendly wave generator and generate the wave. Now on the friendly wave generator, we will do a new logic connection. When the first friend is generated, we're going to come back to the logic gate and close it. And that way, when if we have two players and a second player enters this area, we're not going to get two Carl Fredricksons in here. Which I don't think that would happen anyway, but that's just a good way to try to prevent that. And then on the dynamic trigger, a new logic connection when exited by player any. So when they exit the radius around that locator, we're going to come directly to our friendly wave generator and defeat the wave and that will take him out and on the friendly wave generator new logic connection when the wave is defeated we'll come back to our logic gate and open it so this way we'll only get one stand <laughs> and uh Whenever the first player leaves the area around here, then we'll go ahead and take him out of the toy box, since presumably the players will be leaving this area. And so that'll save some resources for not having that expensive townsperson in here all of the time. All right, now to set him up as a mission giver, we'll come over to our radar marker first, and we'll connect that up to the locator. And on the properties for the radar marker, I'm going to set the beacon type to be a yellow exclamation point. Beacon location needs to be the locator. And we're going to make this active by default. So when you come into the toy box, this will be on. For the dynamic trigger, new locator connection. Try not to spin that camera around so much on you. And under the properties for this, and <laughs> game did that automatically, sorry. Under target, we'll go to the locator and the trigger distance. For this one, we are going to set to be pretty tight, make it four. So that if one of the cars you're racing in the toy box, um, one of the cars goes off the track, we don't inadvertently um, activate this mission. But that means you'll have to be right up next to stand to turn on the mission. And then for the text displayer, we'll set this up like we did last time. So duration four. Properties, we'll make this a proposal for the text style and all players can accept or reject the proposal. So the mission giver will be invoked when we enter the radius around him. So on the dynamic trigger, a new logic connection when entered by player any. We are going to go to our text displayer and we're going to go down all the way to the missions category. And Stan is going to say, I need your help. And then if the player accepts the proposal, that will kick off the mission. And so on the text displayer, a new logic connection when the text proposal is accepted. First thing we'll do is come over and turn off our radar marker for Stan. And the second thing we'll do, text proposal accepted, is turn off the dynamic trigger. All right. And then at this point, we need to go 
turn on the mission down at the other end. But before we do that, let's go ahead and set things up down here. So we have a target camera that I've put out here, and this is going to show the player the problem that they need to address. So on the properties for this, and let me get into my picture here. Okay. So for this, we're going to do a new locator connection, and I'm going to connect up to this locator. I'll move that locator where it needs to be in a moment. And the properties for the camera, we're going to use a defined duration of three seconds. That's how long the camera will be on. For the player viewport, I'm going to set this like we did last time to local players shared viewport. So all the players see this. Glow through is off. Camera target will be the connected locator and all the rest of those are fine. All right, for the dynamic trigger, we'll do a new locator connection and let's go ahead and connect up to that same locator. That will save a little bit of memory. And on the locator properties, target needs to be the locator. Trigger distance needs to be 40. So we need to be far enough out from this locator from where I'm going to place it for it to activate the cauldron and everything else. All right, for the enemy spawning cauldron, I've already configured the wave to add the Dunbrock Witch's Marsh Muck, and I'll set the count on this to four. And under the properties, take the generation delay to zero. And we're going to put the enemies on the green team. And we need to put them on a team as well as the safety dome. So they'll leave the safety dome alone. Because I want the player to have to smash the safety dome to rescue Mabel. And last thing we'll configure is the safety dome. So under the properties for that, the protection dome actor, if we scroll down just a little bit, we'll come to Mabel. And she appears in the dome. Cooldown time zero. The canister health will take this to 100. And again, we'll put this on the green team. And you'll notice she's facing the wrong way. So I want to pick this up and spin it around like that. All right, and now we can go ahead and move this locator since both things are connected to that. And we'll put that right underneath Mabel. And for the radar marker for her, actually I did not connect that. We'll go ahead and do that. For the radar marker for her under the properties, I'll set the beacon type to be a yellow arrow. Beacon location is the locator, and I want this off by default, so that's fine. All right. So coming back over here to our text displayer, when the mission starts on the text displayer, we need to do a new logic connection. When the text proposal is accepted, I want to come down here and turn on the radar marker for Mabel, because that shows the player where they need to go next. So we'll activate that. And then we'll come back to the text displayer. New logic connection on text proposal accepted. We're going to come over to our target camera and activate that. And that will turn on the camera for three seconds. It'll be looking at Mabel so they can see the problem that she's been captured. And then the other thing we need to turn on is this dynamic trigger. And I actually want that off by default. So we'll come over to our level starter over here at the Mystery Shack. Because I don't want the 
enemies to be put in here until the mission is started. So on the level starter, new logic connection on Catalyze. We'll come back over to our text displayer, or our <laughs> dynamic trigger, sorry. And we'll turn that off. So we enter the toy box, that's off. Which means when the mission starts, we need to turn it on. So on the text displayer, new logic connection. When the text proposal is accepted, then we'll go ahead and turn that on. All right. Now when the player gets over in this area, they'll enter the radius around that locator. So on the dynamic trigger here, we'll do a new logic connection when entered by player any. We want to come over to our enemy spaldron, spawning cauldron. <laughs> spaldron, I'm creating a new word. And we're going to activate that, which will generate the enemies. And to stop them, the player will have to destroy the cauldron. And we only want to do this once, so on the cauldron, we'll do a new logic connection. <clears throat> when the first unit is generated, come back over to our dynamic trigger, turn that off. All right. And then they'll have to battle them. <clears throat> and once they do, then they can destroy the safety dome. And that will end the mission. So on the safety dome, new logic connection. When it's destroyed, first thing we'll do is turn off the radar marker for Mabel. Second thing, new logic connection. When it's destroyed, in case they destroy this somehow before, that cauldron, we'll go ahead and turn this off. Uh, let's see. And then two more things. Our standard end of mission stuff. So on the safety dome, new logic connection when destroyed. We're going to go back to the mystery shack. To our sound generator. And under the musical category, we're going to play the fanfare. Musical flourish. And then one more connection. Oops, not there. On the safety dome. New logic connection when destroyed. We'll go back over here to our action enforcer. And we'll have all the players celebrate. And that should do it. Let me just double check everything here. Yep, I think that'll do it. Okay, so let's put ourselves out here far enough away so we don't generate Stan. And at this point, I'm going to go ahead and save my game, and then I'll be back in just a moment. Okay, I have saved my game, and now we'll go ahead and head over this way. And as we get closer, it should generate Stan. And it does. And if we leave the area, it should take him out. And it does. So that's working well. So let's go ahead and head on up to Stan. And he says, I need your help. We'll say continue. And it's showing Mabel trapped in the dome. And we have a new dot on the radar marker. So we'll head this way. And as we get closer here, that cauldron should come alive. And it does. <laughs> Ooh, I leveled him up. Oh, I'm really leveling him up. <laughs> oh, 
What does it take to destroy this cauldron? There we go. I think I got them all. <laughs> I want to pick up all my sparks. Okay, if I push this, does it... Oh, the gnomes come out. Nice. After we get our next mission in, that may not be the case. Take that for kidnapping, Mabel. <laughs> I like how he digs. Like he's kicking the dirt up against his target. <laughs> and there we go. We've saved Mabel. So that's Stan's mission. Next time, I'll hook up the logic for Old Man McGucket's mission to gather the parts he needs to build the Gobble Wonker, the Gravity Falls equivalent of the Loch Ness Monster. In the meantime, for those of you who are building this toy box on your own system, you may want to visit my blog where I've posted a logic diagram to help you connect up the creative toys that I used in today's episode. You can also subscribe to my channel by clicking my photo in the lower right corner of this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.